Hello and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow Season 11. I'm Sunanda Jayaseelan. On the show tonight, we're doing a deep dive into the macro economy, identifying what are the big ideas that are going to be needed as we march forward on a trajectory of growth. We're talking all things macro economy today and the big reforms, taxation, as well as legal reforms that are going to be needed if India is to achieve its growth targets. That conversation with none other than author, commentator and the former CEO of PNG, Gurchan Das. Such a pleasure being here with you in your beautiful home, surrounded by all of these ideas, all of these books. And it's so fitting that we're talking about the ideas for New India. Sir, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. I want to start by first and foremost really talking about the fact that we're at a very interesting time here in the country. Uh, we are, of course, growing as an economy. We're seeing a lot of positive comments about the domestic economy. But there are also challenges, of course, and we'll come to a few of those, both domestically as well as globally. My first question to really set the ball rolling, if you could give us the big picture to say we're where we are right now, but what's it going to take to propel us really forward, perhaps into the next 50 or the next 100 years? Well, where we are today is the fact that since 1991, that's when really India's economy began. Mm -hmm. The previous 40 years was license Raj. It was the lost years as far as the private economy is concerned. Um, we have performed since 1991 at close to 7%, 6.8, 6.9. Now that is very, very good. Annual real growth, net of inflation of 7% in a democracy. But the sad news is that this 7% growth has not created the jobs that we really needed to create. And why not? Why not? Because we have almost skipped the industrial revolution. Manufacturing still is 15-16% of GDP. It should be double of that. And this is why we have failed to create the jobs that were required. Why we failed to create a manufacturing revolution is because the bias against private, while they removed the license Raj in 91, but Inspector Raj continued, the bureaucracy's attitudes, negative attitudes continued. And in effect, the government itself, on the one hand, trying incrementally to open up and do the reforms. On the other hand, the bureaucracy's reform did not take place and that held India back. Sure. That's why IT, we'd made an IT revolution because the bureaucracy couldn't control everything. Things went through the telephone lines. Yeah. So it was India grew at night when the government slept. Mm. That's why we say sure. India grows at night. Sure. So looking forward now mm. to 2047, mm. India at 100. Today, our per capita income is $2,200. If we keep growing at 7%, our economy in 2047, our per capita income would grow to $10,000. Our economy from 3 trillion, it will become 19 trillion. And we will be a middle class nation. Mm -hmm. However, to achieve the jobs that we have failed to create, we will have to create a manufacturing revolution. Mm -hmm. And we have to follow the basic 
formula of the East Asian Tigers, which was the export of labor-intensive, low-tech manufacturers. Which brings me to my next question, and you know, you've spoken about the elephant paradigm previously, and why India's perhaps an elephant and not so much a tiger. Can you explain that to our viewers? Well, it's the idea there was that we we are not an Asian, we're not a tiger. Meaning, Asian tigers grew up, and China is the latest example. They have risen, partly because they were not democratic. And there was that they, that, that an elephant, see, as a noisy democracy, we pay a price of freebies and various things. Sure. And so the... Uh, but the good thing about an elephant is that it may not have speed, but it has distance. So while I, I wrote, so it has, it, has, it has consistency. That's why I feel the 7% growth will continue in the future. And that would be phenomenal if we can continue at 7%. We, we, and, and if we keep that trajectory going, sure. I think we will become a middle class country. You, you said manufacturing, I just want to pick up on that and talk about the fact that we didn't really hear any large scale announcements from the finance minister when she presented the budget. Were you expecting to hear more? Do you feel that you know, for it to be effectively implemented, perhaps also the thresholds need to be lowered so small businesses can participate? Well, I, I think it was a good budget. Hmm. It's a good budget, investment budget. And a forward-looking one. And job-creating sure. budget. All the areas, even in MSME's case, there was a government guarantee on capital, on loans. That, that was there. Uh, so it was, it was good. The, the, the best thing we can do for MSMEs would be just to get rid of, change those attitudes of the lower bureaucracy from processes to outcomes. Mm -hmm. That's what China did. Sure. China's bureaucracy is outcome oriented, not only process oriented. Sure. And, and, and so that I think would help. But I think we have a lot of other positive things that m make me confident that we will be able to uh, uh, that we will continue on the 7% path. Such as? Well, infrastructure has improved. Okay. The, the roads, from 2011 to now, the roads have doubled. Mm -hmm. The mileage has doubled. Similarly, ports, the airports, the, there's been a, in the, this whole Gati Shakti in the logistics area has, has, has helped. And now with these three consecutive infrastructure-oriented capital investment budgets, it will further improve it. The, then I would say the digital revolution mm -hmm. has taken a lot of the friction out of the financial system. Mm -hmm. In other words, and, and, and for MSMEs too, especially, that banks, bank accounts were 45, 50% of the population. 90% now bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and many other things that have come with the digital revolution, including lower corruption mm. uh, as, 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 as a result. In fact, the number of times the finance minister used the word digital when she was announcing the budget, I think that itself was an eye-opener. Yes, the investment in the railways is very significant. Mm. The performance of the railways has improved. The governance is an area which is holding us back. Mm. Uh, the regulators have to be truly independent. You can't have retired railway officials as regulators. Mm -hmm. You can't have retired telecom officials as head of TRAI. Mm -hmm. You've got to get them out of it so that you avoid this conflict mm -hmm. of interest. I'm going to take a quick break on that note. We're back in just a moment. Do stay tuned. Given that we're surrounded by books as we are, um, would it be fair to ask you if you have that one book that's perhaps changed your life, changed the person you are? Well, I, I'll tell you it's an odd, 
And it's a story actually. Mm. It's a story about an MSME mm -hmm. or what you would call an, a story of a startup. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the 12th century in a book, Sanskrit book called Katha Sarit Sagara. Okay. And it's a, it's, a, it's a story called The Mouse Merchant. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. Tonight, in conversation with our Leaders of Tomorrow icon, Gurcharandas. So while you're saying that it was definitely a job creating forward looking budget for any sort of sustained growth to come in, um, you have to have tax reforms which are long lasting and you have to have also the legal system which is really keeping pace with the changes. And my question to you, sir, is uh, of the plethora of changes we are perhaps hoping to see in this country, maybe that one taxation that you feel needs to be changed and changed urgently and one rule or legal pay, you know, legislation that you think should perhaps change? Well, I think that the, let's start with the second one. Sure. The, it's really disgraceful that you have five million cases pending in the courts. Mm. I mean, a, a citizen waits 10 years, 15 years to get justice. And in, where it hurts MSME or hurts industry is the enforcement of contracts. A lot of that enforcement should be out of the legal system, sure. should be by arbitration, it should be by mediation, it should really be, get out. Because this is really a, a vibrant market economy, mm -hmm. needs quick enforcement of contracts. Mm -hmm. And India's rating in the ease of doing business, we will almost last mm -hmm. in the world on the enforcement of contracts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is clearly a, a very big deal. But while we are on governance, I would say that I've already mentioned bureaucracy. The reality is that the bureaucracy is not outcome oriented, it's process oriented. And in the case of parliament, why are one fourth of our MPs and M MLAs, why do they have corruption? Why do they have criminal records mm -hmm. against them. Mm -hmm. So these are very important governance things that we need to do in the next, in the future. Sure. So I would just say that <clears throat> to come back to manufacturing, to become a manufacturing powerhouse, one, we need to follow the model of the Asian tigers. Mm -hmm exports of labor intensive manufacturing. We are not export friendly, mm. meaning our tariffs are too high. You know, in these PLI schemes, I would in each PLI contract, I would put in a tariff sunset clause mm. where the tariffs have to drop, sure. you know? And I would give an incentive. Mm -hmm. I would give an incentive in each PLI scheme for export. I would give an incentive for labor intensive sure. manufacture, mm. which is what will create jobs. Mm. So these are some of the things we can improve. We were talking about uh, China and we were talking about jobs. So maybe I've, I'll first pick up on the jobs part. Mm. Yes, jobs are being created, but every sector that you speak to is talking about skilling and that there's a huge skilling gap. Mm -hmm. And my question to you, sir, I know there's no easy answer to it perhaps, mm -hmm. but how can that get fixed? Because we're already talking about the jobs of the future, which are going to be digital heavy and technology led. Yeah. How do we fix that? Well, the, certainly the skill missions, the skilling uh, thing, and I was glad that the budget announced the fact that uh, 
the skilling also now will be in the high-tech areas of mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, etc. But ultimately, uh, I would say what, where we have failed is the education system. We have failed to create an employable graduate. Mm. That we don't, in our schooling system, we don't give uh, the way Germany and European countries give a lot of dignity to make jobs done by hand. Plumbers sure. and carpenters and all that. And that's very much, very important part of it. And an and, and, and inquiry oriented education system sure. is how you produce an employable graduate. Okay. Um, my last question to you and you know you wear several hats. You are an author. Uh, you uh, obviously you watch the macro economy also very closely uh, and you've been very closely associated with India Inc. So I want to pick up on that and really ask you from your professional life if there's any feedback that you have perhaps received or uh, anything that you would want to leave our entrepreneurs with to say, this is what helped me and this is advice I want to give you? Well, I think the success, business success, is if you want to be a successful leader, a successful entrepreneur, it's not going to come from over, or from having only skills or having in only intelligence or uh, even uh, having great credentials, IIM, IIT, no. Mm -hmm. The great success is from attitude. That an attitude which, and what is that attitude? For example, determination. That determination that I believe this is the way to do it and we have to try it. So that conviction, that's what's important. Or an attitude of a degree of humility. Humility means taking your work seriously, but not yourself seriously. It means that you do your job, not thinking only of your next promotion, but because it's the right thing to do, that job. It, there is, because you enjoy doing that job. Mm -hmm. so, so attitude. Sure. Attitude would be my key thing that sh first of all you must, you know, there are only two secrets to happiness. Love the work you do and love the person you live with. Mm -hmm. Simple. So love the work you do. Fantastic. You know? Sure. And, and, and that's attitude. Uh, curiosity. Be like a child. You know how a child behaves. A child, it's raining outside. Everybody, all adults are carrying umbrellas and there's a puddle on the road and all the people carefully go around the puddle. What does a child do? Jump he goes right and jumps yeah. right into the puddle. Mm. That's the attitude you have to have. Curiosity, trying out new things. Excitement. Uh, in fact, I do have a last question. That wasn't my last question. And you know, given that we are surrounded by books as we are, um, would it be fair to ask you if you have that one book that's perhaps changed your life, changed the person you are? Well, I, I'll tell you, it's an odd, and it's a story actually. Mm -hmm. It's a story about an MSME, mm -hmm. or what you would call an, a story of a startup. And it goes back to the 12th century in a book, Sanskrit book called Katha Sarit Sagara. Okay. And it's a, it's, a, it's a story called The Mouse Merchant. Mm -hmm. Now there's a story of start in a startup age. Yeah. And we are in an age of startups. And I think the startups are the ones who are going to create the jobs. And they are going to help uh, make our future. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that lovely story and thank you for your time and for joining us here on The Leaders of Tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for tonight's episode. If you have any feedback for us, do let us know. Our details on your screens as we speak. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.